of the blood is when you end up in hell, when you end up going to a worse place than this because you just weren't ready for the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. You didn't see it as relevant, as valuable, you see, so that you sought it. You need to see knowing right from wrong, the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth from all the rest. You got to value that above all else and you got to seek it. You got to be determined and, and you got to resolve to go out and you got to be defiant against the other and say, no, whatever, I've been lied to you. I don't trust anything the mainstream media has to say anymore. Unless we're reporting a car accident, a weather you know, incident, something like that, most of what they say is just crap, it's rubbish. Okay, because we know this secret government out there, this deep state, the evil deep state, okay? We know there's a schism in the deep state and all this, and these people want to hold the secrets close to the vest. They're always giving us this national security line, and they can get away with anything, get in way, way in perpetuity with not telling us the truth about the UFO issue. Though the majority of Americans already believe the government's not telling us everything. Who's the government? Okay, the secret deep state government that don't want us to know? don't want us to know, well, Quay Bono, uh, gee, uh, JFK was abolishing the Federal Reserve. Whatever happened to that, just because they killed the president, wasn't that convenient. Huh? Gee, that uh, the Federal Reserve has amassed this fantastic power over the last uh, 50, what, 60 years? What are we looking at now? 1963? I mean, 55 years, something like that? Yeah, not bad, huh? Not bad. That's funny, since he was already supplanting the currency with these Federal Reserve notes. So that was sure convenient. That was sure lucky. How'd they get away with that? But the mainstream media doesn't ask. So these are the people. This is how we're being led around by the nose. How they're stealing the wealth of our nation right out from under our nose. They're getting away with genocide right from under our nose. They're spending $50 billion a year of your tax money on Section 8 housing, which is supposed to prevent homelessness. It's to pay the rent for people that can't afford their own rent. Okay, and the problems just get worse and worse and worse. The, the national debt is, just keeps increasing. The dubious war and the prospect for it, it, it's always clear and present because the people are so, they're so downtrodden, really. Okay, people say there's all this opportunity in society and think, well, wait a minute. Do you understand that civilization is like links in a chain? And not all the links are just as strong. And that doesn't mean they're not all just as good. It doesn't mean that you should exalt yourself if you're a strong link in the chain and look down on those that are weaker links, okay? Because like Jesus said, you must hate your life in this world. So you're kind of a, if you feel like a misfit, like you're a, you find the system abhorrent, you see it as a rigged game, a game you don't want to play, and you say, no, I'm out. I see how this thing works. I'm not even going to play. I'm not even going to be a link in your chain anymore. I'm already, you guys play your little game with each other. Your, you know, survival of the strongest is really what it comes down to. So that's who's going to be the chain at the end of the day. Is that the way you want it? Well, just remember, if that's not the way God wants it, okay, then that's not the way it ought to be. And we all need to just be honest and just admit it and say, look, we are a family. We are one species. We are one race. We are the chain of humanity. And you can't see this thing as, look, it's okay that this guy bit the dust. This was the next weakest link in the chain. Okay, he was the lower, lower working class, and he just was, he lost his spirit, was poor toward the world. But if you read the Beatitudes that Jesus taught in the book of Matthew, you realize, look, it is the poor out there who, who, you know, their, their riches is in the kingdom of heaven. They see this world for what it is, the, the crap hole that it is. We've got to get it, that it's temporary at best. We're all going to wind up either uh, being cremated or in a coffin, right? I mean, our destiny does not look good. That's not being negative. That's just facing reality. That we're, no matter what, we're all, we all know we have to move on. We have to give it up, whatever it is. And that's why I try to convince people that they need God. We all need God. I mean, without God's help, I don't know how I'm coping. I don't know how I'm talking about these things. The idea of me losing my life and dying, I don't like that at all, man. I want to be one of those ones that makes the transition in the rapture, you know, that says, that's here alive at the end of the age and that uh, in the twinkling of an eye, the perishable body, this body of death, this carnal body meets the imperishable, just like that. 
That's what's supposed to happen. That's what's predicted. And I like that. I, that appeals to me because I don't like the idea of rotting, being a rotting corpse in a ca ga casket and, and walking through that door into, I don't know what it's going to be like. There'll probably be other souls, just like when we came into this world, we came out of our mother's. And uh, we came into this world, and there was people all around us. So I imagine it's going to be similar to that. And I imagine there's going to be nice people, just like when we come out of the womb. It's generally nice people there, unless it's a doctor there to chop you up, right? As a um, late-term abortion or something. But yeah, I, uh, you know, I want to be as ready. I want to ready my heart as much as possible for what is to come and I want to help other people convince other people they want to ready their own heart their soul their spirit their mind for how it's going to be when Jesus Christ is ruling over the affairs of men on earth not if no no it's coming because with the faith of a mustard seed I could promise you that just a little bit of faith I have I trust in God I believe all the time you don't know how many times little things in my life something I can't remember something I need help with and it gets done. I mean, the, the, I, I can't go into all the various and sundry nuances and, and the minutia of what I'm talking about here. But you just got to get an idea. I mean, this is, God is real. I know God is real. And God is phenomenal. I know that this galaxy was set up by an incredible creator, almighty God. I know that much. And I believe that we are incredible creatures. What? Look at us. Heads above, intelligently, all the other creatures on earth. We're incredible. We are like gods. That's it. In the image and likeness of God makes us like little gods with a small g. That's not arrogance to God. What do you think? God's threatened by that statement? No, he wants us to be that. But he wants us to have the right character and nature and reflect and represent him properly, to be the puppy dogs out there with this agape, unconditional love, even toward enemies, given the benefit of the doubt. And say, look, maybe they really are deceived because we don't know. We don't have the wherewithal to determine, to decipher who is deceived and who is the deceiver. we got to leave that for God. So we can't condemn people. We can't judge them in that sense. And with the measure we judge people, that same measure we too shall be judged. So about capital punishment, again, I mean, there's so many reasons why we don't need to do that. It's torturous. I and mean, put something on someone on death row, that's psychological torture to say you're on death row. I mean... No, it'd be better just to kill them. That's it. Just as quickly, get it done as quickly as you can. That would be the most humane thing. If you're determined to do it, lynch them. I mean, you know, spontaneous in the heat of the moment like Moses did. That's killing. But when you plan it out, that's what makes it murder. That's why capital punishment is first-degree murder on the part of society. It's as clear as light of day, but people want to, the majority of Americans would disagree with that statement. Because they believe in vengeance. And I get it. It's not. I, I'm not going to play stupid here. It's not like I don't understand it. Any more than I don't understand why people want to be prosperous and successful and even famous. I get it. It's not that. Anyhow, my tape is running out. And um, I think I talked a lot about this business bugging me with Alex Jones. And maybe I should be more bugged about the, the incident in Manhattan maybe I'm, my heart is getting jaded I mean this stuff is just getting so routine somebody running down people every day I don't know what to tell you except I know who started these wars let's remember who's starting these wars and creating all this all these refugees who's doing it the same people the money masters of misery that's it it takes a few billionaires out there supporting this cause or that cause, getting people divided, getting them at each other's throats, starting these dubious wars. That's it. So we know who's behind it, and we know the motivation. They want more power and control. Misery loves company. They're murderous. They get some enjoyment. These are sadistic people. I don't know how to describe. Insanity is very difficult to try to put. This is the logic behind an insane person. You understand? It's like they're not thinking it through. They're not considering their salvation. They act all smart, but really it's just evil genius. And if, unless you're compassionate and merciful and kind, you really aren't intelligent. How do we define intelligence? Because, you know, saving your soul by being a good, upright, decent, righteous human being, that to me is intelligent. Not being that person is not so intelligent. It makes them crafty, cunning, shrewd, evil, evil genius, okay, mad scientists, but it doesn't make you a good person. It doesn't make you a smart person. It doesn't make you an intelligent person. Saving your soul. Now that's intelligent.